Hemmenschen, with the team, Damon Penny, Ben Winfield, and Louisa Brown. We guide you, through the supernatural, the occult, and the unexplained, answering questions, that will make you question, your grip of reality, with special guests, guiding you through everything, from demons to divination, cryptids to crystals, religion to skeptics, we explore in depth, the true meaning of, the unexplained. So strap in, kick back, and enjoy, as we enter, the, other, dimension. Welcome everybody, it's our special tonight, we don't normally go live on a Saturday but we're going live so it's your Saturday night Paranormal Fix with myself, Damon Penny aka the Paranormal Viking, joined by my beautiful co-hosts Ben Winfield and Louisa Brown and we have our guest tonight from P3 Paranormal, we have Matt all the way from America and it is fantastic to have him here, so guys welcome him in there in the chat room, we're going yeah, to talk tonight and we're going to get through it, so yeah. Don't forget, guys, if you want your merchandise, the link is in the other dimension. Go and hit it up. It's proper cheap, and it's very exclusive. And I think it's on print on demand as well. So, And Ben's got a show live tomorrow from 7.30, I think it is, isn't it, Ben? Yep, 7.30 to 8.30, where I'll be taking you through a bit of a change of usual. We'll be going through a history, but not on the occult side, more on the execution side, because I fancy a bit of a change. Which seems to people find it interesting. We're going to be looking at the historical ways and ancient ways of how you got killed. Yeah. Mainly looking into the <laughs> Inquisition era because that's when everyone went crazy and started killing people in all different new manners. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to I'm going to crack. I'm going to join Lou. I'm going to crack a bottle of wine open and I'm going to watch it. Mate, I'm going to have you on. T. I'm going to have you on the live so people can just see your reaction. <laughs> Some of them are very, very rude. That sounds like a blast. Yeah. <laughs> Friday. So that's like a good Sunday night before you got work the next day. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, guys, we're joined by Matt from P3 Paranormal. He's with us tonight. We're going to be talking to Matt. So, Matt, before we start, introduce yourself to all the listeners. Let them know what you, you do and what it is you're up to over the other side of the pond. Well, uh, like you said, well, first of all, guys, thank you for having me. Um, I'm honored and I feel so blessed for you guys inviting me here. Um, great intro, by the way. I love the video. That video Thanks. was really cool. Uh, yeah. But like you said, my name is Matt. Um, I am actually a par part of Paranormal Consultant. My wife is the better half, as I always say. Um, <laughs> we do a bunch of different things. So Basically, Paranormal Consultant, we help teams out. We build team, help teams build, rebuild, um, help them with investigations, with evidence, um, just uh, basically anything they need. Basically, a multi-tool to help teams out. Um, we also do different podcasts. Um, I have my own show. My wife has her own show. Um, we do, we help people out with their shows, too. It's I do a little bit of everything <laughs> and uh, network with literally hundreds of teams. So that's, that's really what we're up to. Jack of all trades. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great. Honestly, it's I, bit, was, I, was and I think as the other saying goes, oh, well, no. Sorry, I was going to say, as the other saying goes, 20 is a 20. <laughs> I was saying the other day, I was speaking to, to Ben and Lou and that, and, and you talk about these paranormal consultants, you think like, I started investigating about 10 years ago now, and if we had someone like that around to help us back then, how much easier and further we would have got on how much it would have brought the para unity into it. Because back when I first started investigating, it was literally at the point where everybody was at everybody's throat and it was all like, you know, you didn't have any help. You was basically on your own. So it's, it's crazy that you do this for so many teams and, and you're able to like sort of network with so many teams. It's, 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 it's fantastic. It's great to have you here. Well, it's great to be here and I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Like I, I've been in this field 16 years. Um, I ran three separate teams and when I first started, you're, it's, you're correct. It, it's definitely something I, I wanted when I first started because, yeah. you, you know, you try networking with teams and let's be honest, um, whether you're, you know, over in the U S or over where your guys are across the way, 
you know, there's not a lot of pair unity. A lot of teams don't want to work together. They don't want to network for whatever reason. And, you know, I wish I had somebody to help me. And I've been through a lot. I've struggled. I've been up. I've been down. I've been all over. And when I first finally decided, you know what, I've had enough of the team setting because there's a lot of drama, a lot of, you know, people want, you know, to go like big with it and be on TV and they want the money. And then the other side of the team doesn't really care. They don't, you know, they're just hobbyist. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's so stressful. So I was talking with my wife about it and I said, you know, I just wish I could be in this field and just help people. And we decided that, you know, uh, I, I even said, I said, I want to consult with people. I want to consult with teams. And she goes, so do it. I'm like, what, <laughs> like a paranormal consultant? And she goes, yeah. And I was like, I like that. That's a good name. We're doing it. And <laughs> I started doing like these really stupid shows. And I was telling Ben and them earlier, literally in my car, just filming, you know, how to videos or just talking about it. And then I started working with Scott Morton. He's uh, he's a, one of the co-founders of Warren Area Society of Paranormal. And he said, you could really make this into something. He said, you know, look a little professional, talk about stuff, have a set time and start working on that. And after that, next thing I know, you, you know, a year and a half later, this is where I'm at. I'm going, <laughs> really? <laughs> I think we've spoke to Scott. Yeah, we're on the Scott show. Yeah, we're, we're back here at the beginning of mm-hmm. March. Yeah. And he's going to be mm-hmm. on our in two weeks' time. She yeah. is the brains and the beauty. <laughs> I'm just... I hold the diary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Ben, how much does that story sound a lot like how we started up doing this? It is very much, yeah. Well, <laughs> me and David started at completely different ends of the scale, but we ended up bumping each other because we were both doing the exact same thing. <laughs> It's crazy because you, you just you, you get an idea in the paranormal world. You sort of, you get an idea and you run with it, and the other works or it don't. But it, there's no grey area. It either completely drops out and you get nowhere, or it just mm-hmm. takes off. And the idea of being a paranormal consultant, I mean, I, it's the first time I've heard of it. Like to be honest with you, it's literally the first time. But the idea behind it and the actual like the, the knowledge that you have behind it, it makes perfect sense completely. And, you know, that's that's something else, too, because, you know, there are other consultants out there um, because that's something I did look into. I didn't want to steal anybody's name or anything like that. Um, uh Oh, Emmy. I see Emmy from PDX. She's one of uh, Remember we were talking backstage about some of the uh, craziness and stuff. Yeah, that's (laughs) That's Emmy. I love Emmy. But um, But no, I looked to make sure I wasn't stealing anybody's name or anything like that. But there are different consultants out there for our community and the paranormal field. But they're more like behind the scenes. Like they have to, you have to go to them type Mm -hmm. thing. Like, you know, set an appointment type. And I'm like, no, I'm not about that. I was like, I want people to know that there's a place where they can go to. If they, if somebody needs help, I want them to be able to be able to reach out easily. I don't want you to set an appointment and wait two months down the road and you know and i was like you know what screw it i'm just gonna run with it yeah and i was like see what happens i have Definitely. to admit that's how i used to be used to only be able to get to sort of be through other groups like mm. if it was really bad then they'll ring me instantly and then i'd instantly get in contact with the person and say look what is it you need? and then travel down to them. um yeah i never i never did appointments because appointments just seem stupid <laughs> It's like, if yeah. they need your help, they're going to need your help there and there. They're not going to need it in four months' time. They're going to yeah. need it at that point. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like for the doctors in England, like, you'll ring up with the flu, and they'll be like, um, we can fit you in in about three weeks' time. You think, hold on a minute, I'll be better by then. Yeah. <laughs> it's here, too. It's here, too. That's why I go to the vets. You're just in and out straight away. The stick of thermometer up your backside, you're, you're done. <laughs> You start oh. using that idea. That's pretty. That's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it uh, works. It's probably cheaper Before too. Got- <laughs> I mean, <it's> just- <laughs> uh, big shouts out to Cameron Smith. That's Jeanette. How you doing? Big shouts out to Craig, one of our regulars. Welcome, welcome along. Out to Chris for the ghost on Trent crew. How you doing? Big shouts out to Emma McKenzie. Out to you. And big shouts out to Mr. Scott Morton. There he is. In. 
guys, big, 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 big thing. I mean, uh, Matt, so you said you've been in this for a long time. You've been doing this for a long time. I uh, want to ask you a question. Yeah. What is what, what do you think works better? Do you think like the new age sort of investigating where you're using the gifts and the gadgets and the science or the old school way where you're using your divination tools? What works for you? Or are you like one of the, like, like one of like, like the normal teams where they sort of try and balance the both out? Because I find it hard to balance between the two. You're either old school or new school. Well, typically I'm, I'm more old school. I, I, yeah. I, it's, they're easier. It's more, there's more experience with it. So you kind of can just get into the habit, so to speak. Um, but I am open to more of the newer school style. Um, it to me depends on where you're going, what you're doing. Um, and I think both ways work. Uh, it's just person depending. It's up to that individual because just like with crystals and other things, you have to be comfortable. You have to be comfortable and confident. And yeah. some people love the newer equipment. Some people like old school. It's it's all up to the individual. Me personally, give me a recorder, a flashlight. I'm good. Let's go. Let's go have some fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take my phone and we'll see what happens. But um, I have used some of the newer equipment and I like them. I like you know REM pods, SB7, spirit boxes, you know, all this other, you know, great pieces of equipment that are coming out in the field. Yeah, they'll help. You know, that's I think that's what's helping our field out and why people are getting more evidence because the smarter technology. Yeah. But let's do some old school stuff. Let's have some fun with that. You know, let's yeah. go out with a candle, see what happens. Yeah, man. Definitely. Definitely. I, I think with Ben, by Ben and Lou approach to paranormal is very much in the sense of they sort of do the old school thing and then they link them in with the new school science. Like Ben's been started studying about quantum physics and how they sort of overlay into the paranormal. Um, and Lou does a divination, but she also brings it up with the new science as well. So I think it's good to have a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. um, 100%. Another question. Hey, I have, uh, <laughs> Go and try and explain the quantum mechanic bit here. I just want to see you sort of just flick off. Yeah. You got, I'll be squirming like a worm on a fishing hook, mate. I've got no chance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right there with you. I'm right there with you. <laughs> uh, big shout oh, out to I the Reverend at Wild Bill over there. Uh, big shout out to Annette as well. Welcome, Annette. And Scott Moore, and he says, me, it's a flashlight recorders. That, uh, <laughs> Damn I'm straight. Saturday evening. I may as well. Um, <laughs> um, another question. I got um, when when I found out that you was coming on, a couple of guys messaged me and they asked if you asked uh, Matt these questions. Um, one of them was, if you're right, so completely new to the paranormal field, you're just starting out as a team, right? Where would they want to know where you first start and how you start to get yourself rolling? Well, first of all, if you're you have to decide what you want to do, like especially if you're a team, you have to decide what your goals are for your team do you want to you know help out clients go into homes businesses stuff like that do you want to do that yeah. or do you just want to be like an enthusiast do you want to just check out cemeteries because it depends on either way if you're going to homes and businesses understand one thing and one thing only we're only there for a limited amount of time mm. these families and these businesses are there a lot longer than what we are they you know they basically live there yeah. so anything you do affects them so that you have to come to that realization it's a hard truth to learn because yeah it's fun but your your actions will have consequences that could affect a family yeah. so definitely do your research know what you're doing and be comfortable and confident in what you're doing if you have any doubts don't do anything in our field yeah. and if you know obviously going out for the first time people are going to be a little timid they're going to be a little scared because let's be honest we're going out at night especially yeah. like cemeteries and it's a creepy environment, but that's why we love it. Yeah. And it is a little awkward, but limit yourself, it's, you know, baby step into it. Don't just, you know, buy thousands of dollars of equipment and just run out to a cemetery or, uh, you know, an abandoned building. Definitely do your research and network, go with teams and groups that know what they're doing. I mean, there's no professionals in our field. I've, I firmly believe that there's no experts there's no professionals. There's just seasoned. We're seasoned to this. We've been through it and definitely network. And that's yeah. how you start out. And it's honestly in the long run will help out para unity too, because just like with some of the people here in the chat, 
you know, we started out and we became now family, you know, and you build that relationship and pair unity will work. Just get rid of that ego. And it starts from day one. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Ben, you and Lou have always spoke about that, about networking before you go out as a team. You've always said, both of you have said that since day It's always something we believe in. At the end of the day, you want to go and learn from the people that have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Always gone blind. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I've always gone with the if anyone claims to be an expert, they haven't got a clue about the field, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not saying nothing on that one, but uh, <laughs> but no, and it's okay to ask for help, yeah. especially yeah, on yeah. newer teams. It's okay because we all learned, you know, in one way or another. Like, I've learned some very hard lessons. I've been attacked in this field, I've been pushed, shoved, bitten you know, partial possession type thing. Like I've channeled and I've had no idea because I didn't have that network. I just had me, myself and my team. Yeah. And we've learned some hard lessons and it can really mess you up and it can really hurt people. But I know that one, mate. I've been there myself over the years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's like the movies, like in Hollywood and like, oh, no. you know, your head's going to spin around and you start puking everywhere. It's not like that, but <laughs> I always, I always tell people in the paranormal, anything is possible. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with that. You're gonna, 100%. If you're gonna start spook, yeah, like your head's spinning, you start throwing up, and you have been in the bar way too long before you get out <laughs> before you go out investigating. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm one of those individuals where I, I like the abuse, so I don't mind getting <laughs> scratched and pushed and choked. I was like, yeah, let's go. But uh, I've told people if you see me pinned up against the ceiling or the wall or whatever, and I'm just like one of the little crucifix, now don't help me record that. That's good evidence. Yeah. <laughs> Two hundred pound man lifted up off the air, record it. Yeah. <laughs> All the fact that I'm saying, do it some more, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Harder. The uh, the butterfly effect. There are consequences for our actions when we investigate. A hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. Hundred. Um. We compared it, I think it was on last night's show, to almost like a paradox. Like, if yeah. you're going to travel time and you meet your own self, you're going to cause that sort of paradox. Mm -hmm. So it's a sort of thing when you're investigating. Um, one of our Patreons, uh, Gita, has just put up on YouTube, said, Good morning. Just wondering about the phone apps, like the Necrophonics. He says, Sorry if I spelled it wrong. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to loop with the words, or is it real? Me, personally, I, I'm i not a fan. I'm not a fan of the apps. Um, I mean... To me, there's too much air. I mean, there there are some that are good. They're I mean, they're good tools, but just like with everything else, get your evidence, get solid evidence, prove it, validate. Um, like for example, if you're out there with a digital recorder, and the Necrophonics or any of the apps are saying there's a male present, and you're catching nothing but female EVPs, you yeah. know what I mean? That's that's hard to validate. You know, yeah. I don't. I don't know. To me, it's, there's just too much room for error. You get the equipment. It's I know it's expensive, but get the equipment that it's built for what that is meant for, for what our field is yeah. meant for. Apps, yeah. eh. Like, yeah. for example, there's an EMF meter that I, I used to try. Found out it's just magnetic. It's just magnet. It has no electro part of it. It's not a true EMF meter. Like, you can go right up to a regular magnet, and it would set it off. It's like, okay, no. No. No, it does make sense. That does uh, make sense. I was going to say, I think, because I've tried Necrophonics a few times, and I just think there's so much background noise going up that you can kind of make yourself hear words mm -hmm. and, like, kind of distort it in your own yeah. mind to think, oh, yeah, it said that, it said that. And it's just like, did it really, though? Because everyone, like, you know, especially if it's on a live, people at home will be hearing different things to what people are doing, hearing on investigations. And it's There's too much background noise for me. I don't like it. 100%. 100%. Yep. It's a, a paradoxic effect. It's the fact mm -hmm. that the mind wants to hear what it wants to hear. It's mm -hmm. the no suggestion factor. If we're all in a room and one of us turns around and goes, oh, I think there's a witch with us, suddenly everyone starts hearing from the necrophonic that there's witch cackling. It's that auto-suggestive paradoxic effect. You know, um, yep. psychology compare it to the ink blot effect. You know, when they show you the bit of picture with all the ink blots on it, I might see mm -hmm. a butterfly might see a horse it's that sort of effect taking and that's why i don't like phone apps either <laughs> demons demons everywhere yeah <laughs> uh, and make good shirt yeah man yeah i've got, got i've got a shirt that says I've that actually that. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the right shirt honey 
Craig Williams. But Craig's disappeared. <laughs> I've investigated over a thousand homes in the last 22 years. It's fantastic work and usually raw, untouched activity. And achievements help families. Also, ran my own team for many years. And now on my own museum full of documented artifacts. Working with some great teams, including Ben Lou, every day is a learning curve. 100%. 100%. 100%. That's awesome. Uh, let, let's people keep <laughs> Bar Bills, but Ben, aka Zach. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I want to talk about that as well because I want to get your because you like I said you've been in the field for a long time, and I want to get your sort of opinion on how the field has changed since the introductions of you know the Ghost Adventures, the most haunted, the Conjuring seasons, and other like, films and that. How do you think it's changed the paranormal world? Mm -hmm. The better or the worse? Well, if anybody, I know there's a couple people from uh, my show and my community and family here. Um, they they know Zach and Ghost Adventures is one of my hot buttons. I absolutely disagree with everything they're doing. Yes, I'm not doing it all. Now, there's a story behind this. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> when they did the Cosmopolitan Hotel in uh, San Diego, California, in the Casa de Estudio, um, they actually interviewed me. Because my oh. team and I were in two weeks prior to them being there. And they cut it out, cut my section out for some idiot who has never investigated a day in his life. Who goes up to a power outlet and says it's a portal because there's high EMF. It's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> but regardless, um, here's the thing. I think our field, and I've said this recently too. I think our field is changing and it's for the good. Um Back, you know, 16 years ago when I started, like I said, nobody wanted to work with anybody. It was very territorial. You were fighting for investigations. Now to see people, you know, coming together and networking, like this would have never happened 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. You know, it's we're starting to network. We're starting to come together. And that's a beautiful thing. Para unity is wonderful. And it's it's something that needs to happen. Yeah. You need to people need to start getting the egos out of this field because it's it's not for us. You know, if you're in it for money, you're in the wrong field. Because let's be oh, honest, I this <laughs> this is an expensive field. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, look up ghost hunting equipment on Amazon. It is an expensive field. <laughs> but but it's you got to think what you're in it for. And I think a lot of people are starting to come to help help and network and that's it's amazing it's amazing and i absolutely love it and i call them hollywood investigators these people with millions of views and people like zach and a couple others like they're making money nothing against them i i don't care that's fine they want to make money that's fine if you want to fake evidence believe it or not i'm okay with that as long as you properly announce it if you say in the beginning of your shows for entertainment purposes only have at it. Have fun. Yeah. You can sit there and run around in a bed sheet for all I care and say it's a demon. <laughs> Have fun with it because you're saying it's for entertainment. As long as you classify what you're doing as entertainment, have fun with it. Make money. Get views and ratings and all that stuff. Have fun. God bless you. Best of luck. But I think for some of us who are actually, I don't want to say legit because I don't want to, you know what I mean, who are actually after the truth, people like that who are claiming it's true are really hurting our field. We need yeah. people need to, and it's okay. If you fake evidence, that's fine. Fake evidence, have fun with it, make it entertaining, but make sure you're putting a disclaimer. If you're out in the field and you're doing shows, like I've said this to multiple people, if you want to do shows or a live investigation, be entertaining, have fun with it, have fun with your guests, have fun with your you know audience, you have fun with the location. Be entertaining yourself. Don't make the evidence entertaining. I would have more respect for people if you go out to, like we just did the USS North Carolina a couple months ago. Yeah, sure. And, oh, it was a blast. I can't wait to go back. <laughs> but um, there, we tried to be entertaining for you know ourselves, for the ghosts, for everybody there. We had fun. If we didn't catch any bit of evidence, it was still a great investigation, and it would still be a great video because your personality would come through. Yeah. You know, we don't, you don't need to fake anything. I would have more respect for people that go out to a big, you know, location and say, I didn't catch anything. I'd have more respect for you because you're actually saying it, but if you had fun, that's what it's about. 
Now, and like I said before, even at clients, you don't fake evidence at clients' homes. I have no, I have no respect for anybody who does that. If you're yeah. at a client and you're faking evidence, I have no respect for you. Yeah, that's where it starts to become a bit mm -hmm. barbaric in my eyes. If you're at a location and it's someone's property, you start faking the evidence, then you're going to pull more problems for that person. Because psychologically, it will start making things worse. For yeah, I mean, I, I've helped marriages. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've helped families come back together because, you know, somebody in the family is hearing all this stuff and the other, the partner isn't, you know, that creates a rift. People get up, you yeah. know, it causes issues and stress. And when you come in and say, no, look, you, this is what's going on. Or, you know what? We figured it out. It's, you know, plumbing. It's the electrical. It's this, you know, whatever foundation, you know, you're giving them closure for that. And you're helping them, you know, like I said, if you want to fake evidence, that's fine. But just put a disclaimer, you know, yeah. be be an adult about it. Be real. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, it's like Bill says in the chat room, he said he tells everyone that they use TV programs as entertainment. Only they work on ratings. So no ratings, no show. So, yep, that that's the way it works hand in hand. I mean, and that's fine. That's yeah. absolutely fine. Like, go like I actually have the first four seasons of Ghost Hunters taps when they first started i use oh, that for training because like i train some of my paranormal teams on that i tell them you know look at how they're actually doing it like screw the entertainment side of it look at how they're asking questions look at how they're you know investigating look at the camera angles they're setting up you know it's a great learning tool but when you start looking at and again nothing against them but zach and them they're out for entertainment put a disclaimer that's all I'm asking. Just put for entertainment because it's putting a very bad name on our field. Yeah. Yeah. And people go to these places like the one of the biggest ones, Bobby Mackey's. Oh, right. Yeah, That's yeah, one yeah. of their most infamous ones because there's a portal to hell. You know what? I've I actually know a couple people. One of them's in this chat who's actually been to Bobby Mackey's. And they're like, and they've gotten evidence, but some got in there and had nothing happen. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like, like no one's got attacked. You know, so yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just I'm just not a fan of these Hollywood types who don't put that disclaimer. Yeah. If you can't if you can't have, you know, the respect, I'll just put it nicely. Not my <laughs> show. So I'll, I'll put it nicely. If you don't have the respect for our field to put a disclaimer that it's entertainment, you shouldn't be on camera. End of story. Yeah. Go. Yeah. yeah. That's, you're, that's more here, you're more than welcome to speak freely on here, mate. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we hold no punches back on here, 100%. <laughs> We've got to do flat earth to Ben, and he goes off the rails. So, <laughs> yeah, or Sage. You mentioned Sage to him, he goes off the rails. <laughs> I will <laughs> slap you with Sage attached to a flat ball. Ooh, that's an idea. <laughs> Instead of like spraying holy water out of a water gun, just throw a, a ball of sage at him. I like that. Hey, I'm gonna throw I've seen, <laughs> funny you mentioned that. I have seen Christian's uh, done using a water pistol during COVID. I've, I saw that. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. I was sitting there thinking maybe like a water balloon. Like you fill up a water balloon with a little cross on it and hand it to people. Here you go. Just pop is it, it. <laughs> the photo you've seen is it, it? I'm wondering if it's the same one I did. It's. A couple holding their baby out, and the priest has literally got a pistol, yeah. like a full blown <laughs> pistol that that's water, and he's pointing it at the baby from about a meter away. Yeah, <laughs> I was in tears on that drive through baptisms. I love it. <laughs> it's it's all the rage, man. It's all the rage. It's all the rage. <laughs> I can um, just see it now. You get like a, a a nun or another member of the church at like the start of the parking lot. So what are you here for? Baptism? Okay. Crosses it off. It'll be this amount. Pull ahead. Okay. What are you here for? Oh, christening? Okay. <laughs> Confirmation? <laughs> oh, wedding? Okay. It's like a drive through like a McDonald's. You place your order and then you go to the next window. A couple of squirts of the wall pistol. Do you want fries with that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that large? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like some incense? Okay. <laughs> Would you like a complimentary Bible today? <laughs> Just throws it. <laughs> um, Bill said that if you mention Alistair Crowley, I go crazy. Yeah, it's only because I've experienced Alistair Crowley myself. That's why I, I don't want our listeners to have that. So that's the reason I do it. Um, question. Uh, one of the, like, I've got my team with me now and they're asking questions. Um, they want to know, have you ever been to like help somebody in their house? 
mm-hmm. and they've sort of been like a, a know-it-all. So you sort of try and explain to them what's going on. Like it's the plumbing and they go, no, 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 no. Is it? Have you ever had that? And how did you deal with that scenario? Yeah. Um, I, I've actually had a couple um, out in San Diego. That's where a lot of my experience came from with San Diego. Um, they were all like, they, they watched the shows. They made the mistake of getting their information through the shows. One yeah. of them being Zach. Oh. <laughs> so they kept telling me, they kept hearing a demon growl. They kept hearing this. They kept hearing that. And, uh, you know, the house was shaking and all hell was breaking loose. And I'm like, okay, well, it will definitely help you. And I said, if it's a, you know, demonic, this is the steps we'll take. And I like having my clients with me during the investigation. They stay at the base area. So they can watch DVR, they can listen in on what's going on, and if we need to go somewhere or do something, we the, use them right there. Or if nothing's going on, maybe it's them. They can come in and sit with the team for a little bit, do an EVP session, see if that triggers anything. And they gave me literally like a three-page report and list of all these different things that was going on and what they thought it was. And we heard a couple of knocks. We heard some, you know, some random voices come out of nowhere. Um, but nothing really that screamed demonic to me. There was nothing that was like that. And I'm going, Hmm. All right. I wonder something. So we brought him in, we were doing an EVP session and then we heard just the faintest of knock. Like we said, if you're here with us, can you please knock for us? And I, we even, we are, I like to do the ones where we actually example for the spirit. So they know it's like, so can you give a knock like this? And then say, no, don't record her. That was me. And we heard the knock and I was like, okay, cool. I was like, well, can you come over and chat with us? We had an EMF meter that was going off and they were freaking out and we're like, okay, listen, <laughs> this is not a demon. <laughs> and they're like, well, how do you know? I was like, cause if it was, that would have been thrown at us. We would have been attacked by now. And I said, we have Bibles all over the house. I have holy water in my pocket right now. Um, and I don't feel any bit of uncomfortable. I feel just fine. Yeah. And I said, it, I really highly doubt it. So we came back, did a couple more investigations. Come to find out there was one of their main, oddly enough, you said plumbing. In the basement, I didn't notice this in the first investigation, but one of the couple of the straps were broken. So when oh. they would flush the toilet or something like that, they'd run water, it would just bang back and forth. Yeah. So we ended up, you know, strapping it down for them and fixing everything. We tested everything out and they still swore up and down. It was a demonic. And I, we showed them the evidence. We let them listen to it after we went through everything. And uh, it was funny. I, I couldn't hold back. We listened to one EVP that we caught. It was a female voice that said the name of the, the woman right. and the wife. And she goes, that sounds like my grandmother. <laughs> it's like, was she demonic? <laughs> She's like, no, she was the sweetest woman ever. And then you hear, I love you. Oh. Here, what happened was a couple months earlier, her grandmother passed away. So she came back to kind of calm her, yeah. and let her know, get the closure. And they were just ignoring her and just going right to the TV and Google and everything. And just, yeah. So Granny was not happy. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> Grandma was just letting her know that they were there. No, I mean, that's crazy, crazy. Uh, one of my teams just asked, oh, by the way, I just want to just say to everybody out there that's listening in as well, uh, I know we're sitting here bad math and Zach Bagans, but we should really be careful because both my auntie and my mum are completely smitten. They think he's a proper hunk. Paranormal crumpet. Paranormal crumpet, as they call him. There you go. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. Again, I have nothing, nothing personally besides that interview, but... To me, as far as being an asset to this field, eh. oh, he's entertaining. I'll give him that. He's entertaining. Jeez, but it's, it's just his looks. <laughs> <laughs> You're a nightmare. <laughs> they're, just, they're sitting there going to me. We don't actually watch it for the paranormal thing. We just watch it for the over Zach. It's like, wow. Oh, well, okay. that's fair. That's fair. I mean, have fun. <laughs> um, yeah, there, as long as the mute button's on, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say something, but I'm I'm live on air, so there's certain words I can't use on air. So... When, when has that ever stopped you? Seriously, when has that ever yeah, stopped well, you? 
describing what the describing hell? what Zach Bagans is to the field would be tantamount of cancelling the show altogether. Ever. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I I agree, I agree with what Matt's saying. Like, yeah, as long as they put the entertainment purposes at the beginning, it makes sense. Yeah, because they're not doing yeah. anything wrong. They're entertaining. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But you know, like when you sort of you look at films like The Conjuring, Ben will back me up on this, and Lou will back me up on this. When The Conjuring Two come out and the demon was was Valak, yeah, the amount of cases that come across my table and across Ben's table where they believed it was Valak that was haunting their house, mm-hmm. it, it was crazy. That's where the damage is yeah. done. Don't get me wrong. All these films and all these programs, they're they're making the field go forward. We've got more believers. We've got less skeptics. It's 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 a great thing. But it doesn't help when it's causing these sort of trends and giving people those false ideas of what they're dealing with. I am going to give you all a prediction right now. Uh oh. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Is now it lottery we're... numbers? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody <laughs> if I wish, I wouldn't be saying it. <laughs> I'd be sat on the beach somewhere doing this show. <laughs> In the next, I would say this time next year, if we do, if we do this show. Yeah. That we will be talking about a demon called Pazuzu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because in a couple of months, a new film of The Exorcist comes out and they're mm-hmm. using Pazuzu again. Now, I reckon we should have a catch up uh, just after Christmas and see between <laughs> all of us how many cases we have dealt with involving the demon Pazuzu. <laughs> Honestly, that name has come up at recently. Yeah. <laughs> it's just because they've just started advertising it recently as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like, like um, in America. yeah, yeah, they do. It's it's like um, Zozo when when yeah. Zach was where he was going, he was getting Zozo on the board, Zozo on the board, and he was like, oh, it's a demonic link to a, to a, to a spirit board. Now, there's no like, I'm not being funny. There's no way, shape, or form that one demonic could be at three places at one time when three people are doing Ouija boards. It's physically impossible. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm, so, like I said, but I agree with Matt for the entertainment, but the, the actual, the Hollywood side of things, sometimes it's doing a bit more damage than it should be to, to the field that we're in. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's it just does damage. I mean, Jeanette's taking a mickey out of you, Ben, by the way. She's saying drum roll when you said you're giving a prediction. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my last predictions, people weren't too keen on. In fact, I held back on the ones that, New Year to give them ones because I knew what was bloody cool. Right, so this is a question for both Matt or Ben, right? One of the team have asked. So why is it when people go out on in, in, on investigation that they carry holy water in their pockets? Go on, Matt. I'll let you go first on that one. Honestly, like I said earlier, in our field, anything can happen. And I feel like if you're going to go out and have a sexual investigation, be prepared. Be prepared for success. So any type of protection, whether it's a crystal, a Bible, um, say whatever, whatever you feel that will help protect you, that's what you need to carry with you. Uh, me personally, I'm an ordained minister. I'm a Christian, been a Christian my entire life, and I am open and I have studied, you know, Wicca, pagan, and a lot of other different religions. Um, but it couldn't hurt. It couldn't hurt to, you know, bring some crystals and have some holy water, have a Bible. You know, you never yeah. know. Never know what you need. So that's why I do it. Yeah. It's the same with me, carrying. I always carry frankincense, no matter where I go. Yeah. Frankincense, I always take on every single investigation, every single case I do, I've always got frankincense. Yeah. yeah. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Like batteries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, it sort of goes to, to someone's belief system, doesn't it? At the end of the day, yeah. the, your belief system, like Ben carries frankincense, you carry holy water. I have a necklace because um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm a Viking, so I carry my model in a necklace, which protects me. So I was born there. I'm raised a Catholic. Yeah. I carry an obsidian wand. Oh, right, yeah. So yeah. that's because you might have been born and raised. In, sorry, mum's asking me a question because she's really interested in what we're talking about. <laughs> she, she, raised a Catholic, but now she carries an obsidian wand. So that sort of bears what I was saying. It depends on your belief system. You might have been born yeah. and raised Catholic or a Christian, but if you believe that the Wiccanry or the witchcraft stuff works more, you're going to carry that for your protection. It's almost like a peace of mind sort of thing. Yeah, do you know what I mean? People carry holy water. I don't understand why. It's just, it's just, it depends on what the person, it depends on what the person believes in. Sorry. 
Pup, no, you're good. <laughs> no, I actually I agree. Like like I said, you know, I'm a I'm a born and raised Christian. I'm a born again Christian. I'm a Christian, you know, ordained minister. But I carry some of, you know, the wicked protection stuff. I do, you know, some protection spells. I do study different religions. And that's the thing. Like, I feel like in this field, you have to be open to at least understand everybody's religious backgrounds. And because who knows, maybe there'll be something that works. Like, like I said, I'm a Christian minister. I believe in prayer. I believe in holy water. I, you know, have, you know, a Bible with me, but I also carry a bunch of Wicca protection stuff with me. I have a metaphysical bag that has a bunch of herbs and gems and crystals and all this other stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> again, it wouldn't hurt. Hey, so, who's the best weapon? Mm-hmm. Uh, Bill's saying that um, he's an ordained priest, spiritual as well. Studies all the religions in his practice. If you put them all together, they all have the same information. Just the names mm-hmm. have been changed. I, I agree with that. They're Bill, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> what Bill is literally a fountain of knowledge, man. Yeah. I've I've seen I've seen uh, Wild Bill on a couple other shows. It's been a minute since I've seen him, but you know I've seen him before. Uh, but actually, I have a theory, and we can get into this another time if you'd like. But I believe that all religions are actually the same. Yeah. No, we, if we, you we... if you really go back and look at it, each religion is exactly the same. It's the same one, just a different name. Exactly what Bill's saying. No, we need to get so... you back on here more because you just you just. <laughs> Flick back through all our shows, you'll agree with everything we say because we're always saying that <laughs> everything stems back from like one base religion and it just catapults out. And if if you read your Bible and you study history, there's a certain catalytic point in time where we all started out speaking the same language, and then all of a sudden, magically, we all stopped speaking the same language. There's literally thousands. Yeah. I don't know about Maybe. anybody, but I, I don't speak all the languages. It involves a towel and a uh, place begin with B. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. At the end of the day, I agree. I agree. There is a lot of overlap in history and religion. I mean, you look at the days of the week, their name, that you can trace them back to their names being named after Viking gods and stuff like that. It, it, mm-hmm. You know, it depends on your belief system. But yep. at the end of the day, like, it, there is a lot of overlap there. We have Bill on the show. And to be honest, yeah, me and Ben probably said about four words throughout the whole show. Bill just took over. It should have been called the Wild Bill Takeover, really. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's just, it, it, it depends on your belief system. I mean, so moving forward now, right, you, you've got your, your parent unity thing. You've got your parent. A lot of people will say, especially, I don't know if Ben and Lou agree with me on this one, in this country, parent unity doesn't exist. It's one team picked no. against one team, especially in England. Not in England. It, it doesn't exist. I mean, what would you say to people that turn around and say to you, Matt, how unity doesn't exist. Times are changing and you're watching the wrong shows yeah. because <laughs> just if para unity doesn't work. Then why did you guys invite me on your show? Why do you have a show period? And para unity to me is a belief system, just kind of like religion. I'm not saying para unity is a religious belief, <laughs> but it's a belief. It's just like treating people like the golden rule, treat people how you want to be treated. Same thing. You know, yeah. pair unity is going to work and it is working. And the proof is right there. Like over, I know over in UK, you guys do have some issues with pair unity. I understand that. And we're working on it. And I say that because I have right now, I think four or five teams in my P3 program who are in the UK. Mm-hmm. It's like, and it's, it's growing. I love I say, it. It's like, it was- we're like, we've got the other dimension, the radio show, podcast, and this, that, the other on Facebook. Then we've also got other teams that we just kind of like advise, yeah. we promote, we'll kind of like have our little network. And there's like a few teams on there, like there's Supernatural UK, a new team that's just been set up. And me and Ben are going out with them and we're promoting them quite a bit on our pages. And yeah, we've got uh, a yeah. paranormal path. Our normal paths, which is Jacqueline. Like I say, we've got quite a few that we all like share between yeah. and we all sort of talk between us. And that's the, the, awesome. problem with, the problem with Para Unity in the UK, it was originally set up by two of the yeah. biggest groups in the UK, which is, I'm not <laughs> going to mention either names on there because... Do it. 
they don't really? deserve they don't deserve the credibility. <laughs> their, their names don't deserve coming out of my mouth. But they set up the entirety and they seem to lord over the whole power unity that originally set up in the UK. So it's nice now that we've got more like doing power unity with you guys over in America. Our sort of our network becomes your network and your network and our network then become a massive umbrella of more network stuff like that that's how like you say that's how it's supposed to be done and honestly anybody and, and i'm not trying to call anybody out by any means i'm not here to you know stir the pot so to speak but anybody who says pair unity will not work well you're problem number one yeah yeah you it, that's that's it's plain and simple if you say it's not going to work well guess what it's not going to work <laughs> you get rid of the ego that's number one get rid of the ego and if you like i said if you don't believe it's not going to work then it's not going to you know, no. pair unity is going to be worldwide and it needs to be. We are yeah. not going to get like I, I one of the example I use is we're all after the same question. We already know there's life after death. We already know that that that's already done. Mm -hmm. We are trying to figure out what happens. And I truly believe that until we all start working together, we'll never find that answer. We're all the, that answer. That question is a big jigsaw puzzle. We are all little pieces. And once we start putting everybody's beliefs, practices, techniques, equipment, everything, we start working together, we will find that answer. Yeah. yeah. And it, and the proof is, here's my proof behind that. We started networking, like I said, a couple of years back, this would have never happened. Recently, once everybody started their own show, started networking, started doing things, now all of a sudden, there's more evidence. And it's good evidence. Teams are yeah. coming out of the woodwork, no name teams, like just starting out teams. They're getting amazing pieces of evidence. And it's getting very, very hard to debunk these pieces. I mean, you could pick some apart, of course. We're always going to have naysayers, but this field is going to really start taking off. And it's it's already starting. Yeah. It's and I love it. Yeah. I, I agree. And the way way. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Matrix, is Vonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to Vonnie. Um, one of our Patreoners, one of our regulars. It's great to have you locked in. Um, I, I, I agree, man. Uh, we're all searching for the same thing. We're all searching for that piece of evidence, that smoking gun, where everyone sort of goes, do you know what? Yeah, we believe you. It's the same thing like the um, the UFO and the alien um, investigators were doing for years mm -hmm. and years. Brilliant bits of evidence, brilliant bits of evidence. When they all started to come together, when MUFON was made and they all started to bring stuff together, it was then in 2018 the American government decided to launch uh, the, those, um, what was it, uh, the documents saying that they do exist. And we are, we, we, we do know that they exist. And now we're going to change the phenomenon's name to UAP because it's an identified alien phenomenon now. I think the same thing is going to happen with the paranormal world. It's going to get to the point where mm -hmm. everybody getting together, we're all going to start sharing evidence. I just think that there are certain people who have, like you said, that ego that won't allow it to happen. But when these people yeah. actually come around and start going, do you know what? Because I'm not being funny. Me and Ben and Lou, we could name certain people. We can name certain teams that are these people that sit there and go, oh, yeah, Parry Uni, Parry Uni. Yeah, but you're not having all of our evidence. We don't want you to have our evidence. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to be the ones that take this global. It's like, at the end of the day, if you share that evidence and that goes global and people now understand they're going to look at everybody in the field, not just your team. They're going to look at everybody, everybody that's been making moves, our shows, your shows, Matt, everybody at those shows, we're all going to be there. So yep. you're not going to, everyone wants to be the next most haunted. Everyone wants to be the next Zach Bagans. What they have to understand is they're not going to get there without support. Everything yep. you do in life. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, yeah. that's my rant. Um, <laughs> no, I, I fully agree. I fully agree. Because I've even said this on my show a couple of times, you know, these, uh, I said, Hollywood, investigators you know here's the thing yeah there's people out there with let's just say a million followers good glad good for you you only have a million because of those a million individuals yeah it's not because of you it's because that you have a million people who are believing what you're doing and one of the reasons why i started this p3 program is because yeah that person may have a million great but if i if we get enough people together supporting each other and sharing each other's stuff out on Facebook, on YouTube, and all over social media. Now we have, say, 5 million subscribers. We have 5 million people seeing our, our things and believing in what we're believing and supporting each other. So we got more. So 
Yeah. <laughs> that's basically my thoughts. So yeah, good on you. You got a million. Okay, great. Well, I have 5 million people who hear my voice, see what I'm doing and, you know, supporting these teams who are yeah. just starting out. So I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the way it should be as well, because obviously we've just with networking as well, but like we're here in the UK, you guys are in America. So that's suddenly two countries that spread out. We've got, we've got friends that watch over, all in different countries. So they're mm. picking up from their countries, watching our stuff, yeah. watching your stuff. Like Irene, I noticed yeah. that Irene's now joined on the P3 oh, as well. And we've like, spoken to Irene before as well. Yeah. She's been on our show. I love Irene. She <laughs> gives me so much crap. <laughs> <laughs> I love Irene. She's always saying something weird, like saying she wanted me in a speedo the other night and a bikini, <laughs> yeah. and, like all this other stuff. I'm like, really? Okay, but no. Like, so, just on this note, if you want to catch Matt, you can find him on Fans Only. He charges ten pounds. <laughs> you know, what was it? Fans. What was it? I, th- I saw Marcus in here earlier. Uh, Marcus is th- the founder of Minnesota Spirit Hunters, another great team that I work with in another part of our family. Um, what it was it? Like para only fans, paranormal yeah. only fans, or something like that. We were all gonna, we were gonna do something like uh, yeah. No, man, you make a killing on that, man. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep pimping people out. It's brilliant. Just two cat balls. Just two of those little cat balls right in here. Just. Oh, no. <laughs> cat balls and red pod. <laughs> An EMF meter that spiked right on the crotch area. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Downturn very fast. <laughs> oh, I love it. No, just, when you think, just when you think the spirit, spirit will won't put any more of the willies up here. Well, see, here's the thing. We're I, I hate when people call me normal because I'm not. I'm paranormal. I live this, yeah. and I get yeah. offended when someone calls me normal. Yeah. The best way of being. This is what I say to people. Like, people go out on a Saturday night. They go out for a rave. They go out for a dance and a bit of booze and that. I stand in the forest and talk to imaginary friends. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you talked to somebody from the 1800s? Oh, you yeah. never have. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people i get along with dead people that's as simple as that that's all it is you know what i mean my wife says that she goes i prefer dead people i'm like yeah me too yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is true it is true it's true but um, yeah i mean if, if anyone in the chat room's got any questions you need to get them on now we're coming into the last eight minutes i don't know ben Lou, have you got any questions for matt no i'm all we were chatting before the show before you turned up so we were having a, a riot then <laughs> i was just gonna say um, so I know Matt's organizing something for next year, some sort of big event oh, yeah. with Power Unity. I remember seeing it live about. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I actually have multiple events. Um, <laughs> first of all, um, we're having something here in the U.S. called Para Unity Day. It's here in Pennsylvania, which is where I'm at. I'm at. Um, basically, it's a group of anybody who's anybody really wants to come and hang out, celebrate pair unity uh, network, meet everybody face to face, have some fun. Uh, there's a fair here. It's just like a carnival that literally shuts down three towns. So it's a really big event. Uh, we're all meeting there, having some fun. And then the very next day we're going to Gettysburg. Oh yeah. No, I've always wanted to go there. Always. So everybody says that. So it made sense to me to go to Gettysburg. So anybody who gets, who comes, you want to go, it's September 26th and 27th of this year. I know it's kind of last minute, but uh, that's the, the dates for those. Um, next year, I'm planning something Midwest of the U.S., like right in the middle somewhere. Um, I'm working with Minnesota Spirit Hunters on getting a huge event together for that. And then I'm working on the year after that on the West Coast in California, um, in San Diego. This is where I started this field, and I want to have some fun there, see my roots. But we've got those planned, and I know some of the UK family, P3 family, they're working on events as well. We want to get some events out your guys' way going on, prepare Unity. Um, And then, actually, for those of you who know Parapost, uh, Brian John Laverty is hosting a big event, a big news event uh, coming out on June 1st. The announcement for what's going on will be June 1st. I'm not really sure what time yet. But there's a bunch of us involved, and it's literally going to be life changing for our field. So I'm excited. I might have an experiment for when you do that. I'd like to try out. 
Uh oh. Here we go. He's speaking slowly, so he's thinking yeah, about it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I have well, this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this experiment. Oh, just point out Wild Bill's comment there. Just yeah. for Matt. He wants to know more about it because he'd like to attend that event. So Bill, if you hook up with Matt after the show, I'm sure he'll be able to fill you in with all Actually, if, if anybody wants not to cut you off, but if anybody wants on uh, my Facebook page, Paranormal Consultant. Or um, I believe I have it pinned on my show, uh, the Paracrew podcast. Uh, the event's right there. All the details are right there. Um, just go. If you can't find it, feel free to message me. Oh, I can really pin it on the show, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can yeah. share it with you guys, actually. Yeah, yeah no, no, I'll, after getting, I'll, I'll speak to you off camera about this uh, experiment because it involves uh, quantum field energy and crystal. Oh. So. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. I have a well, show tonight, so be gentle. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just, just sitting got, here. I've just got one more question from my team who's just sitting there. Um, she just wants to know what was the defining moment that made you realize that you wanted to do this? Well, there was a couple of. Um, I had an experience just like everybody else. Um, when I was 16, um, I was leaving my mom's work. And uh, she used to work at a state hospital, like a mental institute. And as I was leaving now in Pennsylvania, we don't talk paranormal. It's not a, you know, people put us down. It's taboo to talk about. Um, so as I was leaving, uh, I was driving in this country road. And if you all remember the old cell phones, the Nokia ones that were indestructible, yep. lived yep. through a nuclear blast. <laughs> that went, that went off. And it vibrated and nobody had that number but my parents. So as I'm driving, I look down to grab it. I pick it up and look. And as I look out my windshield, there was a female standing in the middle of the road, about 20, 30 yards. I had a 1987 Chevy Caprice Classic. Did not stop on a dime. If the dime was about a mile down the road, I would have stopped right on it. But it's not a quick stop. Yeah. I slam on the brakes and I witness this individual pass right through my vehicle solid. When I finally stopped, I got out and I said, ma'am, are you? And I realized what happened. And she just slowly turns, looks at me and smiles and disappears. Wow. And I went, no, the <laughs> car drove off. <laughs> and we, I never really spoke about it. I never really spoke about it. Didn't say anything. Cause like I said, we don't talk paranormal back then. We, it was never something you, you broadcasted. And when I was in the military, I was, I was at this bar my local bar in San Diego and a couple of my friends asked me to go out ghost hunting. Now, by this point I've seen some of the shows and I was like, all right, I don't believe in that. It's just entertainment. Yeah, sure. We'll go. So we went out after a couple of beers went out and I saw some figures that I, I was like, wait a minute. No, that's, that's gotta be somebody there. And then I caught my first EVP and it said my name. Nice. And it said my full name too. And I never announced who I was. Nice. And I was just like, okay, I'm hooked. What the is going on? Nice. <laughs> and after that, that's when I started researching. And I tried hooking up with a team and working with them, and they were all about money. And I almost quit the field right then and there. Like they wanted $500 from me the first day. What? I was unemployed. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't have it. They're like, well, you got to borrow it or you got to call somebody. You got to get this money or else you can't be on the team. And I just went, see ya. So then I started researching and some <laughs> other events happened and I ended up starting my own team. And that just took off. Never, ever heard of that. I've never, ever heard of that. that that's a new one on me. That is crazy. $500. Oh, they that charged almost three grand per investigation just to, for the clients, for their clients, a family would call them and they would have to pay three thousand dollars just to get their team in. And then on top of that, they'd have to the clients would have to pay for their evidence. If they wanted the evidence back, they have to pay that. Wow. That is ridiculous. In all the years I've been doing cases of like private cases and stuff like that, I have never charged anything. Same. I, I've been doing this 16 years. I've 
investigated over 400 homes and businesses, literally gone all over the place, and I've never charged a dime. Never. Never charged anything. The most I'll ask if anything is gas money. Yeah. And yeah. that's if they can. If they can. Yeah. If they can't, no big deal. I don't care. But yeah. I always accept donations. You know, if, if people want to donate, that's fine. But it's not expected. No. No. 100%. Yeah, yeah, I was that. I almost quit the field that day. Yeah, no, and no, I'm so I, glad I didn't. Yeah, no, I, no. um, just got to send a massive shout out to Kate, one of our YouTube listeners. You uh, absolutely massive. Welcome along, Kate. It's good to have you locked in. Um, unfortunately, guys, we got to the end of the show. Um, I have a little confession to make. Uh -oh. I have spent most of the day trying to figure out how to record an extra one for Patreon, but I haven't worked it out. <laughs> so what I'm going to do right is I'm. We're going to reschedule with Matt from P3 and we're going to get him on the Patreon. Just bear with me, guys. As much as I'm like clued up with everything, some things are just a little bit too got more complicated for me to work out. Just like. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> for me, that's called life. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure we're going to have you back on again at some point, Matt, if you wanted to come back on. Hey, I'd be honored. And honestly, uh, I want to switch, uh, switch the invite. You guys want to come on my show? Let me know. Wicked. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, just before we go, just big shouts out to Jackie Langley saying she's a new big shout out. Big shouts out to you, nice. Jackie. Welcome also, to the madness. Natasha McGate, Mike 78, saying Ace Live, thank you so much. Honestly, definitely up there on the Mount Rushmore of some of the shows we've done. It is one of the best ones we've done so far. Cannot doubt that. I've been hooked from beginning. I don't know about you and Lou, Ben, but this has been amazing. What an interview. Oh, thank yeah. you guys so There's much. Wild wild Bill. Oh yeah, Matt, if you would add friends request, please. I really want to talk sometimes. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. Yeah, no, wicked. But make sure you go to the toilet before you talk to Wild Bill. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Half hours, like, but I tell you what, I'm not going to with people where you talk on the phone and you're like, yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like that. It was like I was literally hooked from beginning to end. It was unbelievable. <laughs> well, thank you. And you guys are absolutely amazing. And actually, it was funny. Um, I said earlier I shared this out to a bunch of groups and I messaged them. And I literally sent a text to or a message to my uh, the Parrot Crew podcast. We have our own uh, host chat. I said, guys, they're just like us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, thanks for that, man. Honestly, Matt, no, thank you so much. Honestly. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Thank you guys. You guys, the hosts are the really the ones who make the, the show. And you guys yeah. have been amazing. And I love you guys for it. Thank you. Aww, thank you. Cheers, you. Hey? Is Damon confused? Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday show, join Ben and Lou as they navigate through the world of execution. Um, on the Occult and Science Show. Oh, That's from half past that. seven on Sunday. Um, but don't forget, we're going to be up. Well, <laughs> Lou's putting links up to Matt's show after the show. That's what Lou does. She does the links for us. So she's going to be putting them up after the show. Um, I've got a lot of drinking to do, so I need to catch up. So, yeah, I mean, it's been great. Honestly, Matt, thank you so much again. But from us, guys, we've got to go. So it's bye from me and bye from Ben and Lou. See you tomorrow. And bye from mm -hmm. Matt. See you guys. And just remember, guys, if there's no other explanation, there is always the other dimension. Take care.